And yes, I think we're live now. And uh, if we're live, that's a good news because that means that I am now uh, streaming on one out of three uh, Facebook groups. Uh, the one is the Norwegian site on the photo. And the other one is the Danish site on Danish underwater photographers. And then on my own photograph fit Facebook group. So this live stream is actually going on to all three sites at the moment. And if you're watching, then it's because you signed up to any of these three groups. Obviously, if you popped in by mistake and you did not sign uh, into one of these or you're watching the event on YouTube afterwards, you can always go to Photograph It EU on Facebook and uh, find us and sign up for that page. And you will be notified once we get these live sessions. But we are here today because we want to celebrate the Norwegian diving. Um, this, uh, this means that we are posting particularly on, with a focus on Norway. And that means I have a special guest from Norway on the on the stream today. Uh, this is a guy called uh, David Goderich. And uh, in April, he was actually announced to be new ambassador for iGlide, for iGlide housings. iGlide is an American company. It's quite old. It was started by, by Ike. Yeah, who would have guessed? Uh, Ike is not with us anymore, but his kids has uh, taken it over and are today running a very successful business uh, out of America, producing uh, housing systems and flash systems, all sorts of gear actually for their housings. And uh, they have actually chosen David to be their brand ambassador here in, in the Nordic region, which is, uh, which is great. We also sell iGlide here in Photograph It, and that's why I have a lot of uh, interaction with David and uh, any, any time that he needs new equipment, we have a good chat about that. So why don't I introduce you to uh, David and uh, see if I can find him here in the system. There he is. Can you hear me? Hello. I can hear you. Oh, excellent. And I can hear you. Oh, that's a good start. Um, welcome and congratulations with the ambassadorship. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Is, uh, is that just uh, an incredible honor to you to be brand ambassador? It did come out of the blue, yeah. It was a bit of a shock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they've got a huge list of um, incredible photographers as, on their ambassador list. So it's, yeah. a, it's an honor, yeah. I, I, I won't lie to you. I knew about it and I have known about it for quite some time. So uh, it's, uh, it wasn't my decision, but let's just say you were part of the short list. And uh, I really think you've done uh, some incredible photography and... Uh, I wouldn't call you one of the newcomers because you're not new, <laughs> but yeah. you're, you're really making an effort to uh, post a lot of pictures. And and listen, iGlide had known about you for a while. They had seen your postings. So just for you out there, if you post your images and you actually make uh, hashtags, uh, the manufacturers of these uh, these brands will see your pictures and, and, and they do reflect on them. And so do I. So that's 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 quite an important thing to do. So anyway, um, since you're an uh, iGlide user, avid keen iGlide user, why don't we have a look at what you shoot with? Yeah, it's uh, right here next to me. Yeah. So this is the, the housing for the Z7. Yep. So and I, then I, you can, I can set seven. Yeah. So I use the, um, the iGlide housing and their, blit and their flashes as well. So I have a pair of uh, D160s. Count. Perhaps you could just lift it up and let us have a look. Just, uh, oh, just it's a bit heavy. Yeah, I know. We're seeing oh. like a guy. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a bit of buoyancy arms on there as well. And yeah. uh, diffusers on your flashes. Those things are game changers. They are. That is a, a very cheap upgrade that just uh, absolutely changes the performance of the, of the strobes. Okay, I, I, I hear what you're saying, but don't you have problems with them as regards to backscatter occasionally if you do close-up things? No. no they, like I say, they, they changed the game for that for me. I can pretty much point them anywhere and they'll light up a scene. It's, it's incredible. Okay. Yeah. yeah, interesting. I, I guess you have very clear water where you dive normally. Uh, it depends on the season. You know that yourself. I mean, in the winter, yeah, very clear. But right now, um, we have about a one meter of visibility. That's why I'm doing this with you and not, I'm not in the water. 
Those who know me would know that I have a thing about their diffusers. I don't particularly, it's not that I don't like them. I just ask people to consider why they're using them. Okay. Because when you add a dome uh, or diffuser, um, your colors will be faded and you have a wider beam. Uh, obviously, the, 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 the positive side is that you you get softer light and you get less hard uh, shadows, but that also means that you get a more fussy light and, and, and that's okay, but you, it's not always what you want. And anyway, it's very important that you that you look at the light that you're getting and, and obviously you can just take them off if yeah. if you want to underwater. So so that's it's always very important to check your light source um, during the photography. That's that's basically what I tell people. But but I'm happy to hear that you're happy with the with the diffusers. And uh, if you're if you're that fond of them, I'll give them a go. Yeah. My own mm -hmm. light flashes. It's like um, most of my photography I prefer shooting at night and yeah. At night, uh, for me, they really changed changed the way I use my strobes. Yeah. Obviously, there you can really see hard, dark shadows, and they would benefit that. I can see that. Great. Anyway, thanks for showing us your equipment. Um, today, we are going to talk about light painting or painting with light underwater, um, because that's that's your claim to fame. That's things you've been doing. And uh, you 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 literally invented it right <laughs> i'm not sure about that <laughs> no. yeah no, the the technique's been around for a long time but uh, i just took it underwater yeah i i told you yesterday when we spoke that i'm an old studio photographer and in the old days we actually did light painting so we had a completely dark studio and if there were places in the in the scenery that we couldn't get light in without that being in the frame we just turned off all the light and just kept on exposing the image. And then we walked in there and we, we used the light and we, we lit the part that we couldn't get to. So I, I guess it's exactly the same theory, but it's, it's going to be interesting to hear how you, how you've taken that on the water and, or how you're using it on the water. So, um, yeah. Um, first of all, you don't sound particularly Norwegian. No, I, uh, I'm from England originally. I moved here. Um, I came here for a six-week contract, and that was eighteen years ago. So yeah, six weeks tend to be a long time, right? Yeah, very long. <laughs> yeah. I assume there's a lady involved. Yeah, yeah, there was eventually. That came after, but uh, oh. I just moved here for the fjords. It's a beautiful place. Yeah, yeah. And you live near Stavanger. I live in Stavanger. In Stavanger, yes. Yeah. And that's on the Norwegian west coast, which is. You know, by far, what I think the, some of the some of the best diving around, cold water diving, the Norwegian West Coast. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, I haven't been to um, I haven't been to Canada, so uh, I still have that to compare with. But the Norwegian West Coast is just what a couple of thousand kilometers long. Just a few, yeah. Uh, one, maybe one and a half. I don't know, but it's it's there's a lot of diving there, and the fjords, yeah, they are magnificent. So I can I can imagine why you why you stayed. So you are a very keen diver. You dive a lot. I noticed. I do. Yes, I try to get out at least once a week, but uh, preferably more. Yeah. And you have great diving right on your doorstep, so that's that's the easy part. We do, yeah. Very, yeah. we're very spoiled here. Yeah, I know. That's what I keep telling the Norwegians. They're spoiled. <laughs> Yeah, they are. Um, whatever the weather, you can always find somewhere sheltered. You can dive in a hurricane here. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. the fjords, even the, in, in, in west wind, you can. Yeah, I know. Anyway, um, you have taken lighting of images underwater to a, a, not a new level, but you've made it your own thing and you really uh, perfected it in a good way. Um, so, uh, should we try and have a look at what it really looks like? Yeah, you can look at our, the, the first image I've ever tried and we're going to take the progress from there. Yeah. 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 Here it is. That's your first image. Lighting that was in the, water. the very first time I tried it. Yes. Well, impressive. How long an exposure is that? Um, I can't exactly remember, but I would put a guess at about four or five minutes. Yeah. Total? 
Yeah. So that's only a, a very small wreck. That's actually the wreck of a Volkswagen camper van that's broken down. It's a car. Yeah. yeah. Of course it's a car. Yeah. Anyone can see that. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, this was my first attempt after I'd done some research on YouTube on how to light paint. Yeah. Um, and I went out and built a light especially to do it because I thought I'd need a lot of light. Yeah. So I built, I built myself a 400 watt video light. And uh, as it turns out, that's way too much. Okay. You see it was too much light. Yeah, you can see a lot of light leakage in that uh, coming out the sides. Because people ask me if they should use a flash instead when they do this. I've never thought, well, no, I, we'll, we'll get to that later. There's something I'm experimenting with at the moment. But no, I normally just use a video light. We'll get to the equipment. Okay. Well, if if that didn't work, so what did you? Uh, so so sh should we check the other in the next picture? Yeah. So Are you happy with this picture, by the way? No. <laughs> <laughs> but it was. Um, it's uh, you know, it was part of the learning curve, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I can see what went wrong, so I went in and fine tuned it afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, how much dry testing did you do before that one? None at all. Okay. Well, you say dry testing. I watch a lot of YouTube videos. <laughs> There's not a lot of dry testing in that, but I hear what you're saying. Fair enough. I yeah, I watched other people dry testing on land. So. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So. There we go. There you go. This one is actually a stack of nine images. Yeah. Because um, when I first started doing it, I'd set the camera on um, to take the maximum amount of exposures, which was nine at 30 seconds each. And then I would swim around, light up during that. And that was four and a half minutes of shooting. Um, and swim around the wreck, uh, go back and see what comes out of the camera and then maybe repeat. Um, and then uh, take them all home and stack them together in Photoshop. Okay. That, that method gives you a lot of flexibility on you know, leaving stuff out if it doesn't go right. But uh, I've since learned to do it in, in one shot. Yeah, so you can actually increase the light in certain parts in case you weren't get, getting sufficient light in there. Yeah. By, stacking, by the stacking method. Interesting. Yeah. So, and, and then what happened? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I entered, this comp I entered this into the qualification round for the NM, for the, the National NMS. Championships here in, in Norway. And then the following year, they changed the rules that you weren't allowed to use stacked images. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a bummer. Yeah. Well, no, because I learned how to do it with one shot. Okay. So that's what you're doing now. You're doing the whole exposure in one shot. Yes. I feel it's a, it's a much purer form of photography. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There. Yeah. Is that, that, is, that's one shot, right? That's one shot. Yeah. Yeah. So this is um, a little bit later on, and it's progressed a little bit. I'm working a bit more on backlighting there. Yep. Um, I just went out to shoot this wreck one day because we were taking it up the next day. We actually raised this the following day to because it's, it's plastic garbage in the sea. Yeah. So I thought I'd better get a quick shot of it before we did that. Yeah. That was nice. Is it mainly backlit? That is mainly backlit, yeah. I've swum around a little bit at the front. Just to yeah. outline the front edge there. Yeah. But it's all backlit, and I, I'll show you the lights I use in a minute. Yeah. Mm. Um, and and then, and then, but it's still just one light you're using. I'm using and, two. I'll use two different lights. I'll use, um, I've got this little video light for doing mm -hmm. the front lighting. Hang on, hang on. Let's just have a look at that. Yeah. yeah. So this is a very small, um, it's a 1500 lumen video light. Yeah. And on the front, I've put this shade. Yeah. Because um, you see in a lot of the images, if you um, aiming the light away from the camera, yeah. any angle that, if you get the angle wrong, then light starts leaking out into the picture. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to avoid most of the time. I like, I like that you're calling the light is leaking. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's leaking into the picture. <laughs> it's leaking, yeah. Underwater, it's, light is leaking into the water. Yeah, where you don't want it sometimes. Yeah. But then yeah. the benefit with this one, because I'm lighting uh, 
this is the front lighting of the of the of the shot. It's got a mechanical switch, so I can turn it on and off instantly. Yeah, because you don't want to be a lot of these modern lights are press and hold to turn off, and you don't don't want to be doing that in the picture. No. Yeah, get it. You need a, a way to stop lighting when you want to. Yeah, I, w I would see the benefit of that. Yeah. So that's the only light you have? No. So that's just for the front light. That's for the um, front light. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so the, yeah. The front lighting of the picture, and then the the back lighting. All those um, light beams coming out. I'm just using a standard primary light. Okay. You know, nice narrow beam. This one claims to be four thousand lumens. Yeah. So, Good uh, claim. <laughs> and I just swim around behind the wreck, quite close to the edge of it. Yeah. Alternating the angles and being a little bit random. How do you manage to get the beam even? I mean, do you count like one thousand one one? If I want a solid beam, then I'll I'll get I'll leave it for two seconds maybe. Yeah. But then also sweeping behind it, you know, really brings it out of the background as well. But to get the solid beams, I'll one two one two one two. Where, where are you beneath it or? I'm just around, yeah, just trying to stay out of the light beam as much as possible. Yeah, because you could be in the shot, actually, as long as you don't light yourself. As long as there's no light, then you can swim around as much as you want. Yeah. You're only going to expose where you put the light. True. Okay. Yeah. So what you're actually lighting there is not the, the wreck. What you're, let's just have a look at the, the picture again. Um, so yeah, You're lighting into the, into the open air. Yeah. So you're basically just lighting water. Yeah, but the bit where you are touching the wreck with the light, you know, it puts a nice light outline around the wreck. Yeah, I can see there's some highlights there in the front. Yeah. Is that because you were too close to the edge? Maybe a little bit too close, but it's also, it's a nice effect. Yeah. I think, yeah. As long as you don't so go what's, too in, what's in the top there? That, that could, that's your bubbles? Or what? Yes. So um, mostly I try and swim around and not breathe. Okay, so bubbles are an issue. Yeah, I don't think they, you know, they they don't look, they're not supposed to be there. So okay. as much as possible, I'm, I'm trying now to swim around, holding my breath. Yeah. When I need to breathe, I'll just put the light down in the sand. Okay, so you'll turn off the light when you yeah. breathe. Yeah, I can take a little, a little breathing pause and then uh, hold my breath again and carry on a bit. But that would... That would mean that you have to sit on the bottom, basically move yourself slowly over. There. It's yeah. tricky swimming, covering oh. the light, breathing, holding your breath, lighting, yeah. and you know, all in one, and and then moving at the same time. Yeah, it's a okay. technique to learn. It's a it's a process. Okay, fair enough. That is that is the technique. That that's good to know. Good to know. I need to know where we need to practice. So uh, yeah. apparently, we need to practice on. Good. Yeah. So, uh, are you happy with this image? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is a, a wreck uh, that's just outside our dive club. Been mm. on it many times. We decided we'd take it up because it is rubbish. It was plastic. Mm. Um, it's nice to have a good record of it. Okay. Well, then uh, let's see what else you have here. Yeah. That's a little bit more uh, dark. Uh, yeah. Scary. The Halloween wreck. <laughs> this is uh, this is my training wreck. So there's quite a few images of this one. Is that one also in front of your dive club? Yes, that's um, <laughs> right outside Maybe our dive club. in front of your dive club. <laughs> Mysteriously, all these boats sink outside our dive club. I don't know why. <laughs> mm. Mm. Okay. But um, yeah, this is um, there's some areas I've missed in this picture that you you can see on on the top. There's some areas that I've missed with the light. So it's yeah, again a learning curve. So as long as you do this in one shot and don't stack them, that's just too bad, huh? Yeah. Yeah. But okay. I mean, you've, if you've got if you've got enough bottom time to do more than one shot, you can always go back and try again and repeat what you've you've done. So that's you. That's what you do. You do one shot. A lot of the time, I'll just go out and do one shot. Okay. If it turns out how I wanted it, then uh, it's enough. I mean. If you're diving, if there's a wreck at, say, 20 meters, yeah, you've got all the equipment that you need to go down and set up. Yeah. 
tripod, all the extra lights I use. Um, and then you're doing, say, a 12 minute shutter. Yeah. By the time you come back and check your an shot, already. by the time you've checked your shot, you don't have any bottom time left. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so it's one die, one shot. A lot of the time, yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Okay. So, can you please try and and explain? You were just saying it, but but you go down and then what? You've if you already know the angle or what? You yes. know the dive side. And it's it's important to know the dive side because once you've set up the shot. You've got to swim around that wreck blind for a little while until you're ready to start lighting. You've got to swim back from the camera, around the camera to the wreck before you start lighting. So it helps to know your dive site. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll swim down. I, I, I use a standard tripod because a lot of the time I like to be a little bit higher in the water than um, you know, just arms would allow me on the camera. I've got that rig, rigged up like a, a stage tank. Yeah. So is that yeah. aluminum? Yes. Or, yeah. And that's why it is looks it heavy enough? No. It's uh just uh it's the cheapest one I can find. No, I mean is it heavy enough? Well, no, it's um when I've when I set up for one of these shots, I'll remove all the floats off of the camera. Oh, okay. And I will normally take a couple of kilos of extra lead to hang off of the tripod. Okay. But um, where we dive, we are we don't have a lot of current. I mean, our mostly our tides are about half a meter, so we're not really swimming in currents or planning dives to tides. It's just dive whenever you want. I get it. Yeah. So a little bit of extra lead, and if you do have to have, if you have got a lot of current, then you need a probably more stable rig. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And then solo diving or. <laughs> no, I've, I've got some very good friends that don't mind hanging around in the dark watching me work. Oh, that's what they do. They hang around in as the dark as, yeah. watching you. Yeah, with their lights off. Okay. What does that cost you as regards to beers? When, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, probably owe a, I could probably owe a few, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That's good dive bodies. Good yeah. dive bodies. That's People sure. just love to be in the water. They're important. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because you'd say, don't go and do this solo or what? No, nobody recommends solo diving, do they? <clears throat> I I agree. I just tend to know a lot of uh, divers that do so, particularly yeah. local diving where they have their own dive site. They, they, I mean, you need to have a buddy that's willing to do this. We all know underwater photography buddies are a rare breed. We, you don't rarely find people that want to participate in, in underwater photography as a buddy. Yeah, unless they're a model. True, true. So that's not a wreck. No, nope. it's part of a wreck, I guess. Yeah. And again, that's uh, outside our dive club. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> to hear that. Um, and that, that must have been tricky because there you – did you light it from the front? Yes, that's – Partly lit from the front, and then um, just some lights added in from the back. Would, like I told would you, that anchor, sorry, would that anchor not be really close to you? Yeah, but I mean, the dome is almost touching that anchor there. Okay, so you can actually live from the camera and do the front lighting. Yeah. Okay. You never thought about putting the light on a stick and just, you know... But there's no need. If, if you're... You know, if you're not lighting yourself up, you're not going to expose yourself in the photo. I'm just thinking about blurring the, you know, silting everything up by 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 being near the bottom. Life skills. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> are you are you happy with this picture? No. <laughs> we discussed earlier. It's, it's something. Else, it's, it's something I want to go back and try again. Yeah. Yeah. What would you do different? Um, a different angle. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Come I like the symmetry, it. though. It's uh, particularly, but it's obviously that it's obvious that it's 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 the effect, light effect, that makes it interesting. I, I agree yeah. on that. Funny. Something to work on. <laughs> yeah. So I assume many of these images are the same wreck in front of your dive club. That's the training wreck again, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
doesn't matter. It's fine. Is it hollow? Is there like a hole through in the middle? Yeah, it's, it's mostly gone. There's not a lot left of it. Let's have a so look. I can actually get my light underneath it and point it forwards and get that that lighting down in the front of the picture. Yeah. Okay. That that gives a good effect that you can see the. Um... It's interesting shadows when you don't normally get shadows pointing towards the camera. Yeah. Nice. And still all the nice lit background. But listen, this one has a green background. Yes. Because this, um, the position I'm in in this shot, I'm facing towards a street light, which is uh, 16 meters above the water. Okay. It's a yeah. street light. It's not the sun. It's a street light. And combined with a five or six minute shutter, it's exposing the pitch black. All right. Interesting. <laughs> So, uh, ooh, tell me, is that one in front of your dive club as well? No, this is not. Now it's, getting not pictures. <laughs> it's not far away. <laughs> okay. It's a short 15-minute boat trip. Okay, yeah. What depth? The depth on this one, that's 25. All right, yeah. Yeah. So this is a real one-shotter. Yes. It's a little bit bigger as well. You know, it's, it's, more, it's more like an eight-minute shutter than a, a five-minute shutter. Okay. Yeah, just the, the length of time it takes to swim around it. Okay. How do you make the exposure on your camera? I will. Um, I can turn my ISO down as low as it will go. So I'm normally shooting ISO 80. Um, and uh, the aperture, depending on the wreck, if it's a big wreck, I'll go to F8. If it's a smaller wreck, you can go up. F11 is a good start point for that small club wreck. Um, and then I use, on the, the, the Nikon Z7, I've got a time mode. So it um, it opens the shutter on the first press and closes on the second. So you have to press twice. Open, Open, shut. and then shut. shut. Um, yeah. On my old camera, I only had bulb mode, which opened the shutter as long as you held it. Yeah. And so to come yeah, around, I, so I, I attached a, a rubber band to the trigger. And just hooked it off to a, the handle of the camera. Okay, so you physically jammed the exposure button. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that sounds simple, but it apparently worked. It works, uh, yes. So the first pictures was taken with that. Was that a D7000? Yeah, D7000 yeah. I had before. Okay. But now, yeah, but it's, it's easy with the bulb thing. Yeah, I, I get it. Nice. Yeah. So now that you mentioned the uh, the exposure times, you said very low ISO. Yeah. Why? Why is that to, in, to decrease the background uh, light in any way, or? Well, there's, there is no background light normally, but um, it's, it's just that's, that's all you need, really. I mean, um, that even just that little light is enough to light the scene. Um, you have to think that when you're lighting the wreck from here and not the camera, the, the light's traveling half the distance. It's not yeah. traveling from the camera to the wreck and back. It's just no. going from the wreck to the camera. Yeah. So you're halving the distance. So you gain a whole uh, PV there, a whole a whole f-stop. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. See, this, this wreck's slightly overexposed in some places. Yeah. I haven't seen the raw file, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> well, you can see it at the front there that it's not recoverable. Okay. But um, I'd like to go back to this wreck in a year or two when it's a bit more broken down. Yeah, it seems quite new. It's really very new. And when it's more broken down and there's some more growth on it, um, maybe some holes in the hull, it'll be a lot more of an interesting subject. Mm -hmm. Nice. Interesting. So there, that's a... A black and white one. Yes. Mm. And you can see in this image, at the, in the middle at the front of this image, you can see some of that light leakage I was talking about. Let's have a look. There's some light leak here. Yeah, so oh, those, yeah. those wispy yeah. lines, that's light leakage. And in this image, it doesn't really, it doesn't really do any harm to the image. No. But ideally, I'd like to have it perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a nice wreck. We haven't. It's not part of the of this. You know, we haven't seen this wreck on any of the other shots. It's a fairly big uh, fishing boat, isn't it? Yeah, 
Yeah, so it's probably 60 footer. Yeah. Interesting. And, and it's not far from the club. It's not right outside, but it's not far. <laughs> I, I, I would have guessed. <laughs> yeah. You can actually swim to it from the club, but uh, you, it's good about okay, I, you know, I would call that right outside the club. <laughs> It'll take to... you half an hour to swim there. All right, interesting. Yeah. Um, so why, why black and white? Is that uh, an effect you're doing? It, it really is quite a striking image, but um, I did have a few uh, issues during this dive. Yeah. That my um, the pressure sensor in my camera was low on battery, so it was flashing a red light. And this shone out through the dome and into the, yeah, into the dome. So it's in the bottom left-hand corner. I've worked on it a lot in Photoshop, but there was a horrible orange glow. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. And with so, just one shot, you don't have a lot of a... Uh... Yeah. Once you go back to the camera, realize it's gone wrong, you go, okay, I'll try again tomorrow. Yeah, or some other day. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Next one here. A little bit more call on that one. Yes. Is that the same street light? Uh, it's the same well, street light growing, glowing green. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this is a, a really yeah, striking image, that one. Listen, are that, is, that, is that a different light you're using? No, same lights. I think I've gone down a few f-stops on this one. Why is it so yellow? Oh, the yellow under there? I, um, maybe I'm shining through some, um, some seaweed there. Yeah, but it's yellow on the top as well. Yeah, that's that's definitely where it's shining through some um, seaweed. Seaweed on the top of the wreck. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's seaweed, Collier. Yeah. And there's something else on that image I can see. There's and a ghost me. hanging on the on the back end. This is, this is my ultimate selfie. <laughs> <laughs> so I've um, there are ways to do it. <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, a lot quicker ways of doing it. Yeah. Um, I swam around and did the normal lighting on the wreck and did the backlighting. Yeah. And then I've um, swam into the frame with a remotely triggered uh, strobe that's on a stick pointing at myself. Yeah. And just triggered that to try and get myself in the picture. It was uh, a. Sorry, how did you remotely trigger the strobe? Um, I've got another one of these. So I've got the, the optical trigger for the Ike light, and I just use a. Uh, a lot of uh, duct tape and tape it to the the optical slave and on and off. Okay, that was enough. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. It's got to be a hand to make some interesting stuff here. I can see, but yeah. um, very nice. Yeah, I look forward to seeing some more selfies. That yeah, could be a thing actually, selfies under. I'm going to go back and do it with a, a more powerful strobe next time because it's not quite enough there. So right. If I, do, if I do it with one of the uh, DS one sixties, it might give more light. That's the DS fifty one. That one. DS fifty one. There. Yeah. Okay. So interesting. Was that on full power? Do you remember? Yeah, full power. Amazing that it didn't. You know, and you were still on ISO eighty and and eleven. Yeah, I think it was higher than F eleven on this one. I'll have to go and look at the the metadata again, but yeah. But there's still not a long way down there. What well, listen? What lens are you using? I've got to ask you. Uh, it's always uh, pretty much always the fisheye. So the fourteen, the fourteen twenty four. Fourteen twenty four. I'm sorry, the eight eight fifteen eight fifteen eight fifteen put on fifteen. Yes. So it's typically a fifteen fisheye. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. the fourteen twenty four is not a fisheye. No, that's flat, isn't it? Yeah. Um, cool. Interesting. So you wouldn't be more than, what, five meters away, seven, eight meters away? Yeah, something like that. Okay, interesting. Just trying to figure out how much power you need with using a, a, a strobe. Yeah, well, so am I. I. I'm still trying to find it out. Yeah, but you see your light is not very, your, your painting light is not very powerful, but that gives a lot right. of effect. But you're, of course, aiming that towards the camera. Whereas yeah. the flash you're hitting yourself with is aiming away from the camera. That's hitting you. Yeah. But it was probably on, because it was on quite a long selfie stick, that flash. Yeah. So probably a meter away from me. Yeah. So not so, a light, not a lot of light would have hit you. No. Okay. It's, some, it's something to work on. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. Um, next one here. 
That's, that's the same wreck again. <laughs> is it? Nah. Yeah. Nice. You can see you can see a lot more bubbles there, but you made you made like a more vertical picture because you took it from the side. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this this is done in um, a little bit worse visibility as well. But this technique really can cut through bad vids. Yeah. Because you're halving the distance the light has to travel, you know, it, it does work in fairly bad visibility. We had a, an interview with Alex Mustard recently, and he said that uh, as regards to wide angle and bad visibility, you really just have to cut away the water between you and the and the subject. Yeah. And um, that's what you're doing there, is it? How close are you to this wreck? When I'm doing the front lighting on it, I'm pretty much swimming, you know, right, say... I'll be lighting it from this sort of distance. I am on my camera here. So 30 centimeters. Wow. You are 30 centimeters from the, the camera is 30 centimeters from the rig. No, no, no. The light is 30 centimeters from yeah, the subject. Yeah. yeah. But, but, but the camera is how far away from the, from the. There may be the, two meters. Oh, two meters. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. But you managed to, um, to get more front light on this one. Yeah, a bit more it even. Suits it. It, it suits, it looks good. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. It would be perfect if it wasn't for breathing. Yeah, the breathing is there, but it it, 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 it does something. No, I get it, I get it. It bothers me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough, Your page, it's your picture. <laughs> that one yeah. is a lot lighter. Yes. So that's done at dusk. So it's um, it's not pitch black in the water. Okay. You've got enough light that you can see what you're doing beforehand. Yeah. Um, and obviously, I've gone down to f18 on this one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously, a lot more of it has exposed. So, how long time do you uh, flash your light then if you're on 18? Um, I will for the for the backlighting beams maybe leave it a bit longer. Yeah. You know, three or four seconds. Yeah, because how long is the total exposure? I'd have to check, but I'd say about five or six minutes on this one again. Okay, so it, it would have still, it's, it's a dusk image, but it would still have been fairly dark. That's why I've stopped it down to F18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 But, but how do you, how, because, you know, that means that your background is pretty much set, but depending on your... Uh, on 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 your shot i mean it's you would you, you could have had a background that was totally overexposed yeah how did you know you had to crank it down to 18 uh just experience now i guess yeah yeah and uh, yeah like you say a bit of that <laughs> yeah because if the exposure was like five minutes it you could have just done a test picture but it wouldn't have done you any good if it was a dusk picture. The ch light would light would have changed during those five ten minutes in any way, and you yeah. could have it could have fooled you. So yeah, okay, testing, testing, testing. Yeah, and that's your that's the rig in front of the club, right? That is yeah. That is getting to me now that you need to have a place where you can practice this that is easy accessible and where you can get back to. That's one yeah. of the key things. When it's uh, experimenting, it's just uh, it helps to have something like this to do it on. Yeah, interesting. Good. That was that was the last image. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Well, that was that was uh, that was quite amazing. Um, so um, now having all these pictures, uh, you mentioned the Norwegian Championship NM uh, just before, and you've. Any any plans for shots for that? Are you still going that route? Um, well, uh, yeah, we've just had the qualification for the NM this year, and I entered uh, one painting picture for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they they took you in or accepted you or? I qualified in first position this year. That's yeah. just qualification, so it's uh, it's all down to the the weekend that it happens. Yeah, I do remember that you like uh, the championship. I do uh, recall yeah. a championship a couple of years ago that I that I attended to as a judge. Yes, you did. So um, it went quite well there. It did. <laughs> so what's what's for the future? I mean, what kind of plans do you have for the light painting? 
Well, now I have to wait until uh, the autumn comes around because it's not possible to night dive at the moment. Okay. Um, but it's, I've got, it's probably uh, an autumn thing. Yeah, well, at the moment, um, it yeah. doesn't get dark here. No, the people need to remember that, that yeah. uh, this high up in the north, you, you don't get very dark nights. So we have summer. this very nice weather outside, but I'm still longing for winter and night diving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Cold, clear water. Yeah, and then what? what and do you then, want yeah, to I've got a list of wrecks that I'd like to try this on. Okay. Um, I'd like to revisit all the wrecks that we've seen so far, hmm? and try different angles and try and do them better without breathing, maybe. Yeah. Um, I'm going to talk to a few people during NM, see if anyone's interested in doing a workshop. All right. Interesting. In Norway. In Norway, yeah. Yeah. Somewhere, somewhere here on the West Coast. Yeah. I do have a, a place in mind that has quite a few wrecks in very tight area. Like in the front of the club? In front of somebody else's club, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um Interesting. Let me know if, if I can be of any assistance or help and we can promote it here. Um, you know, we have a Danish Facebook group as well called Danish on Water Photographers. And uh, when I, I showed the article from Mike Light that featured your pictures, there was a, a good discussion there about uh, painting with light. And uh, I tried to push some people to, to go out and do it. And some people, uh, there are a couple of guys here in Denmark that are pretty good at, at, at doing light painting on deep wrecks and um, some of them had looked into wanting to do like smaller stuff um, trying not to make it too complicated maybe not just wrecks but simply applying it as a feature on you know on maybe not on macro but on still life uh, pictures yeah. I'd yeah. love to see it done on um, you know a small patch of coral imagine the colors that you could get out of a small patch of coral in the Somewhere a bit more exotic. Yeah. A bit more exotic than Norway. Yeah. <laughs> a bit warmer. Like Denmark. <laughs> Do you have a lot of coral reefs? Not a lot. Interesting. So you'd like to go small as well. You'd like to do some some, some yeah. close stuff. I do love wreck diving, but uh, I think it's potential to be done on other things. Yeah. Because because actually I, I want I want to see if I can get around getting a couple of dice dives done with this and, and, and try and do some light paint just to, just to try it out and see what happens. Yeah. But I would, I would choose a smaller subject in order to be able to make more exposures at, 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 at on a single dive. Otherwise yeah. I'd have to get back all the time. And I, I don't have much time to dive, not, not like you. So, um, so I think that would be, that would be the way I would attack it. I think. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. Um, listen, thanks for, uh, bringing us up to speed on how to paint with light and how to get started. And perhaps some people that have been watching this can avoid, uh, some of the frustration and frustration that you, I can imagine, only imagine that you have had, you haven't really expressed any frustration, but I would imagine that you kept back or. Well, yeah, there's, there's always, um, like, like I said before, you know, I want to, some techniques that help improve it, like not breathing that I've found out. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, 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 that's a very good uh, thing. Listen, uh, if people want to follow you, um, they can just uh, go and check, check your uh, Instagram. I'll actually post the link in, in the uh, in the comments section. And if, if people have any questions, they can just leave them here in the comments field or if they watch the video on YouTube later on, they can just leave the leave questions and 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 we'll try to answer them or, or get the questions to you or whatever. But go and follow you on that Instagram. Is uh, you have a lot of nice pictures there, and and it would be nice to see what you're going to be doing this year yeah. with this once once the light painting season starts. Yeah. Excellent. When yeah. it becomes even slightly possible, I'll probably be out at like eleven o'clock at night trying to. Get some dark. Yeah, I would imagine. Listen, uh, thanks for uh, being a good sport and uh, participating in this. I really appreciate it. And uh, I hope to follow you more. And I will be posting a bit of your stuff. If you uh, if you keep posting, I will mo most certainly promote it on my side as well. So thanks for taking the time. Thank you, Lars. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, I'll talk to you soon on the West Coast, right? Eye Thank to you. eye.
See you soon. Okay, guys, that was uh, David Gutteridge uh, with his light painting, and I hope you enjoyed the streams. Um, as I mentioned before, if you watch this on Facebook, uh, you might be able to scroll down and find more of these, or you can go to the Photographic Nordic YouTube channel, and there are several interviews with uh, different personalities there. Uh, we uh, tend to do more in the wintertime, um, but there will, uh, in the near future, be quite a few interviews put up there. So um, in case you need any anything from us or have any questions uh, related to equipment or techniques, you're more than welcome to write us, and we will always try to be very helpful. Thanks for uh, dropping by and uh, watching this.